Pastor, Pastor Tunidada, in today's message. Today's title for this uh, word today is called, You Did It, Loving and Giving to the Poor. Um, you know, I'm going to share with you today some things that are really close and personal to my heart. You know, and, and I want us to just read really quick um, Matthew 25, 31 to 46. We're just going to read it really quick. I'm not going to make any comments. And then um, we're going to look at a few more pictures from the outreach. Then I'm going to break down that passage to you that, that you really get it, that you get exactly what that passage is saying. Because truly, uh, when you get it, you cannot remain the same. So it's Matthew 25, 31 to 46. When the Son of Man comes into his glory and all the holy angels with him, then he will sit on the throne of his glory. All the nations will be gathered before him, and he will separate them one from another. By the way, this is Jesus speaking. In most of you, in your Bible, it's in red, so you know how important it is. He will set the sheep on his right hand, but the goats on the left. Then the king will say to those on his right hand, Come, you blessed of my father. Inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry and you gave me food. I was thirsty and you gave me drink. I was a stranger and you took me in. I was naked and you clothed me. I was sick and you visited me. I was in prison and you came to me. Then the righteous will, say, will answer him saying, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you? Or thirsty and give you drink? You know, when did we see you a stranger and take you in? Or naked and clothe you? Or when did we see you sick or in prison and come to you? And the king will answer and say to them, Assuredly, I say to you, inasmuch as... You did it to one of the least of these, my brethren. You did it to me. Then he, will, he, then he will also say to those on the left hand, Depart from me. You cursed into the everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry, and you gave me no food. I was thirsty, and you gave me no drink. I was a stranger, and you did not take me in. Naked, and you did not clothe me. Sick and in prison, and you did not visit me. Then they also will answer him saying, Lord, when did we see you hungry, or thirsty, or a stranger, or naked, or sick, or in prison, and did not minister to you? Then he will answer them saying, Assuredly, I say to you, Inasmuch as you did not do it to any one of the least of these, you did not do it to me. And these will go away into everlasting punishment, but the righteous into eternal life. Amen? You know, when, you know, I, I, I'd always known this passage, but, but there was a day I read it a long, long time ago, and it hit me like, it was like a thunderbolt, boom! You know, and it was like, Wow! You see, as Christians, I'll tell you this, there are many things that we treat as important as Christians that's really not important at all. And then there's some things that are extremely important that we do not take heed to. You know, and, and, and as we go on, we will figure it all out. Because truly, when you read this, I just, you know, like without jumping the gun, what you saw there was a judgment by Jesus, spoken by Jesus himself. It's a criteria that must be filled. It's a, it's, 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 it's a gate pass. He said it. But we're going to look into it in a few minutes. Let, let's look at it. Yeah, just a few more pictures. Just a few. Just to see that what we're doing in Shining Light, you know, there is a basis for it. There is a reason why we do what we do. Um, those are the faces of people we don't know, but we blessed. Um, yes, yeah, good. And I'll tell you this. When you help people that can't help you back, that can't pay you back, then you know, then you know that you're doing God's work. You know, you see, you see these guys, they can't pay us back. You guys minister to them, and they can't pay you back. So if they can't pay you back, you know that in life, everything must balance out. So who's, who's going to pay you back? God. See, 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 God did not send us to give to the rich. Because when you give to the rich, you know exactly who's going to pay you back. But when, 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 when you 
bless people that you don't know that cannot pay you back then surely god steps in god steps in every single person that you see here you know we saw we've sown a seed into their lives and that seed came from here into their lives and it's a it's a seed that will make them remember that this blessing that they got you know came because of jesus because before we did anything at all we called upon the name of jesus in a very bold way in fact one of the uh, local pastors kind of told me that, you know, this village, you know, they are mainly Muslims, so, you know, they're only like 10% Christians here. He actually did tell me. I said, don't worry, God is here, you know? And, 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 and the Holy Spirit, you see, see all those hands up for Jesus. You know, it's a spiritual seed we've sown in that town. There shall be a harvest in Jesus' name. You know, there shall be a harvest. And truly, you all will have a part to play. Every single person, whether you prayed for us, you gave us money, you came with us, you have a share in the blessing that comes, that's going to come from there. You know, because surely one day we're going to stand before our maker. And, you know, it's like, what did you do? I gave you life. I gave you substance. You know, what did you do with it? You know, what were the works in your hands? And truly, you know, when we do things like this, you know, that's when we know for sure that God is on our side. Amen? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Fantastic. And I want us to just come back really quick to this passage. You know, let's, let's, let's start from the beginning. When the Son of Man comes into his glory. Son of Man here is who? Jesus. Jesus comes into his glory. And all the holy angels with him, he will sit on the throne of glory. Now, when he sits on the throne of glory, he's there for a judgment. And this is Jesus speaking. So, so, so this is no ordinary thing. All the nations, all the nations, that's like every single person, every nation, every tribe, every creed will be gathered before him. And he will separate them one from the other as sheep from goats. Did you just get that? Because back in the day, the, the shepherds used to, to separate the sheep from the goats. And he will set the sheep on his right hand, okay? And the goats on his left. Now, on his right hand, as you will see, those ones are going to heaven. Amen? The sheep on the right are going where? And that's your portion in Jesus' name? That's your portion in Jesus' name? Fantastic. You are heaven bound. And, but the goats on the left, those are going where? To hell. You know, you know many times we're we afraid to call that word hell. But call it, you're not going there. They're going to hell. Very good. You know, see, see, have that confidence that the blood of Jesus has removed you from the pathway to hell. Permanently, you shall not go back in Jesus' name. You know, and, and then he says, uh, then the king will say to those on the right, come, you blessed of my father. So, so God calls you blessed because, because why? Because you fed him when he was hungry. You see, all of this is based on what you did. Amen. It's based on your giving to the poor as we read further. He said, come, you blessed of my father. Inherit the kingdom that's of heaven prepared from you, for, for you from the foundation of the world. Amen? And, and, and at this point, it says, for I was hungry. Now, this means that you are blessed because you inherit heaven because it says, I was hungry and you gave me food. I was thirsty and you gave me drink. I was a stranger and you, and you took me in. I was naked and thirsty and you gave me drink. I was a stranger, took me in. I was naked and, and you clothed me. I was sick and you visited me. I was in prison and you came to me. Why? You know, and, 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 and because you did these things is the reason why he opened the, 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 the doors to heaven to you. It's a criteria. It actually becomes a criteria stated by Jesus. So it's not something that, we, we, that we're trying to negotiate with or we're trying to argue or, 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 or see it in a different light. It's just very simple. You know, if we do these things, we go to heaven. And if we don't do these things, we go to hell. I mean, that's the, the truth of the matter. Many times when we read the Bible, we've got to just remove the covering and just see the point. The point here is, Jesus was saying something very simple. He says, if you do this, go to heaven. If you don't, go to hell. Because, because when Jesus starts talking about, about everlasting fire, he's talking about a place, a, a place prepared for the demons and his angels. Where do you think that is? It's hell. And this is Jesus talking. Does it, you know, does it impact anybody the fact that, that there's something going on here? That, 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 that there were two main things in the Bible, in the, New, in the New Testament. He says, I give you a commandment. That's a commandment. Love one another. So we must take that serious. Loving one another is no joke. It's a commandment. Then he says here, if you do this, you go to heaven. If you don't do this, go to hell. It's important. You just get that. So, so I want us to just get that in our hearts that this is Jesus is talking and he's very serious about what he's saying. 
you know and then he now says you know um when he's talking to the other people he says and 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 then he will also say to those on the left hand he says depart from me you cursed into the everlasting fire prepared for the devils and his angels and 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 why did those people qualify for that because they they, they because they did not do it did you just get so that's why the title is you know you did it i did it you did it you know giving just just giving to the poor um, you know, depart from me, you cursed into the everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry, and you gave me no food. I was thirsty, you gave me no drink. I was a stranger, you did not take me in. Naked, and you did not give me drink. I was a stranger, you did not, yeah, 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 and you did not clothe me. Sick and in prison, and you did not visit me. Then they also will answer him, saying, Lord, when did we see you hungry? That will not be a portion in Jesus' name. You know, because you'll have so fed him and so clothed him and so visited him that, you know, that would not even cross your mind. Amen? So, 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 and, and the people, the kind of person who will ask this question is a, is a very, is a person who's not com com compassionate. One thing about Shining Light Kingdom Builders Church is that the compassionate are drawn to this church. If you're not compassionate, you will not like Shining Light Kingdom Builders Church because you will say, why are they giving to these people? I've had a person tell me before, a very rich man that says, is it your village? No, no, I'm, a, I'm serious. He, he told me, this would, they are not your people. It's not your village. So what's your own? You get, you know, and, and I miss it to him because I don't want him to fall in this category here where God is going to say, you, say, you know what? You didn't just do it. But there are so many people like that. And by the grace of God, there's nobody here like that. Amen? So, so th then he will answer them saying, Assuredly, I say to you, in as much as you did not do it to one of the least of these, you did not do it to me. Do you just get that? that and then, then the Bible says, it's in red, and these will go away into everlasting punishment, but the righteous into eternal life. So it spells it out. Um, um, I don't know why, why, why this passage hasn't really been hammered into heads of people everywhere in church. We're all churches. Actually, there's, there's nothing like an outreach church, to, to be quite frank. Because every church should be an outreach church. If not that things are the way they are, we would not need to define ourselves that, you know what, we're an, we're an outreach church. Because any church that's, that, that, that's really being biblical and going by the word of God will very strongly take care of the poor and the needy. And that's who we are today. Amen? And truly, we have been sent to the poor. That is, that is sure. He says, I had no clothes. He didn't say, well, I had some clothes, but I had no Gucci. I had no Prada. <laughs> Amen? You know? No. He said, I had no clothes. He said, I was hungry. He didn't say, well, you know what? I didn't eat lobster yesterday. You know? So, so do you get my point? Because, because actually, we do a lot of giving to the rich. We do. Because, you know, we're trying to set ourselves up so that, you know, when we sow, you know, the, you know, we are looking at who the harvest is going to come from. You know, and God does not want you to do that. He wants you to, to, to sow into the lives of people that cannot bless you back, that cannot help you back, that cannot pay you back. Because then he comes in as God. And he gives you what they cannot give you. Do you just get that? God will give you what they could not ever give you. That rich man, there's a limit to what he could give you. To be quite frank. He, he cannot heal you. He cannot really give you favor in places that you need favor. But God can. So I need you to just, just, just humble your hearts and just get into his word. You know? And truly, that's what we want to do here. You know, and, and there's one thing. We've been praying a lot for, for Shining Light Center. We've been praying a lot for Shining Light Medical Center. And we've been praying a lot for Shining Light, um, Shining Light Mission Training Center. And just very briefly, I'm just going to go over to you, over with you, what Shining Light Center is. Shining Light Center is a place where what we already do, we want to have a place where we're doing it all the time. And um, actually, the Lord has led us to this point. And and two things. One thing is that with what we do, we do it intermittently. We do it sometimes biweekly, sometimes monthly. Um, but we have the doctors. Doctors have have made themselves available to us. We don't pay them. It's free. Um, we have the medicine. So most times during the month. The medicine is in storage. The food is in storage. The clothes are in storage. And we're waiting for the month to end to go out. In fact, uh, if Blessings is, is here, she's our pharmacist, we throw away drugs. Because guess what? They've expired. You know? And, and Shine Light Center basically is going to be a place where, you know, the way I just said it is like, you know, it was conceived in love. It's going to build, be built by love, you know, for love. To actually reach out in love. It's all about love. It's a place where 
I'll just run it, run through it, through, the, through it quickly. There's going to be an, an orphanage there, an orphanage there, because right now we take care of our averagely 40 children, and these children, to be quite frank, if we had a place to take them, we would take them, because they live in the bush with people that can't really take good care of them. You know, if I say bush, I mean the floor is not cemented. If it rains, the, the ground is wet. The roof is leaky. I, I, I learned from them when it really rains, you can't lie down. You've got to stand up. Think about it. If it's raining and the drops of water is falling on you at different points, you cannot sleep. In fact, in the Western world, it's, it's a form of torture. If, 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 they, if they're trying to really get stuff at you, they let water drop on you like little by little, and then after a while, you'll talk because you can't take it any longer. But this is what they live. So there's going to be an orphanage there. We're shooting to house roughly like 200 people, 200 children. We're going to have something called a soup kitchen. Some people know what a soup kitchen is. Some people don't. Um, we're going to have food for free. Now, you're going to wonder, how are you going to give food for free in Nigeria? But we will. God will guide us to know how to separate the sheep from the goats. And the ones that really need it, we will get it. But actually, each time we go out, we take tons of food. So, and I know that we have the capability already to, to actually provide the food. So, so we're going to have, have food for free to those that need it. There's going to be an, an after-school program where members of this church will volunteer their time to teach maths and English to children of people that cannot just do anything for their children. Fantastic. And truly, you know, it's something that, that we can do. We'll have a daycare center, daycare facility for children of underprivileged moms. But, 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 but truly, see, see, when a woman has financial independence, she's able to, she's, she's, much, she's much better treated. Any women in the house here, please support me if you know. If, when a woman has money, she's, she's, she's a lot. One, the husband treats her with more respect, too. Two, she can take care of her, of her needs. And, and three, it's the woman's money that most times takes care of the children. The bulk of the woman's... So, so, so if you take care of the mother, if the mother has an income, you've taken care of the children. But if the mother has no income, one, she easily gets abused. And two, she can't do much for her, for, for her children. But this program where we can take their children and keep them will allow them to go to work, earn, earn something, and be able to contribute into their children's lives. You know, um, obviously there's going to be some chapel there. One thing I, I, that I'll tell you about Shining Light Center is that it's not a church church, but I'm telling you many souls will be saved there more than most churches. Because I can tell you that when people come in, I've seen the vision already, where, where people walk into a place where the love and what you're getting is to the point where you just start saying, thank God, and thank God. I can see people shouting thank God in different places, different sections of the building. You know, just saying, thank God, thank God, thank God. At that point in time, this God that you're thanking, would you not accept him? So, 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 so truly, I know for sure that many more souls will be saved in a shining light center than in many, many churches. Because, it's, because you are reaching out to every single person, no matter their tribe or creed. When they come in there and they contact the, Lord of, the love of God through you, through you, they shall be blessed, and they shall not be the same again. You know, one other thing too is this. Now, for you comfortable people, you will not know this. There are people that cannot take a retreat. They cannot pull out to worship God in peace and in quiet. And you'll and you, and you ask me why. They live in a room with like six other people. Opposite a room with like six other people. Beside a room with like eight other people screaming and shouting day and night and then we come to church and say so you know you guys take a retreat you know a quiet you know just just a quiet weekend you know you st you, you know just stay away from everybody have some quiet you know and then you seek the lord and then come back with an answer and then to us like normal because you can but there are people that can't they can't they don't have the money to go to what's that place in calabar now obudu they don't even to go to goshen here to retreat they can't but so, so, so the idea is this, that we'll have like, maybe it's just six rooms, nicely furnished and everything, you know, and, and if, you know, if, if you want to do a retreat, we'll give it to you for free. It'll be nice for you, you know, it's just free, just free. Just so that people don't move in, because I thought about it well, so that people don't move in, I can't drive them out. You come in fasting, and once you come out, you're out. <laughs> Did you get that? You know, there's, not, see, see, there's nothing that if God puts it in your heart to do, you can do it. Because we we'll say, okay, if you give them this room for free, so comfortable, then they'll be retreating all the time. Okay? But, but, but truly, it's like you come in, you know, fine, there's not a problem, but you come in fasting, and you retreat fasting. And the minute you come out, you're out. So if you can fast seven days without food, you know, that is good. But, but, but basically, there'll be a limit to, you know, I mean, you can't do more than X amount of days. But you see, the, what God wants us to have the will to do it. But once you have the will to do it, God will tell us how to do it. And there's nothing God sends you to do that he will not empower you to do. If you ever struggle doing God's work, you need to go back. I say, God, did you send me? 
So is speaking. Because, 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 because God is not wicked. If he put you on an assignment, he, what he wants from you, because you are in the physical, is to be bold. God, God is, is, is a spirit, and he has a lot that he needs done in the physical. So he needs children, like you and I, who will be bold to hear him and just do it. And he, he is a power. He does it. We just do the physical, but he does the rest. Amen? Of course, there's going to be a free medical clinic, and we have doctors here. Any of the uh, doctors here? We have pharmacists here that will serve for free. Blessing with your hand. Blessing will serve us for free. Any other doctors here? No, no, but this is true because we go out on medical outreaches all the time. So we're going to have a free uh, clinic. So doctors will treat for free in this Nigeria, but this is true. And guess what? We will give medication for free. Because that's, we've been doing this for like five, six years. We've been giving as much medication for free. And we have never come back with empty buckets. Never. We have given that for free till the, you know, till the people go. You just get, we never come back. So, so we can do that and we're going to do it again. And we're going to find a place and do it. Okay? So medical, so that's, that's free. Um, we're going to have a, sk a skills acquisition center where, where, where we have people here that have all sorts of skills. Um, if we need to buy machines and, and ovens, I think uh, Joanne would love to teach some people some baking and Debbie will teach some people some cooking and even business seminars. You know, just, just, just skills acquisition because as, as God's children, let's equip them. So that they too can be successful and join us to help other people. That's how it's, it's going to happen, okay? And then we're going to have music classes. We've been begging the worship team, that, uh, the, uh, the uh, instrumentalists, that please, you know, come and teach these children how to play these instruments. And truly, it would be so awesome to have this kid who, from his background, there was no way he could learn how to play a keyboard. No way he could just learn how to play anything. But guess what? We've brought them into the center. We've taught them. They've, they've been blessed. And they can now use that blessing to bless people around them. Amen? Because, see, when, you're, when you bless people, you have no idea where God is taking these people to. Okay? And, of course, there'll be a free library. And, uh, in fact, somebody mentioned to me when, when we were discussing that, that we should have a free legal facility, legal aid as well. Because we have many lawyers in the house. See, as a people, as a people, this is doable. We just need to put our hearts and our minds to it. Amen? And, and, and truly, this, this vision is more than one person. It's way, way, way more than one person. And I need us to key into it today. I, I, this is a vision that has blessed me. And I'll tell you this. Um, I, I, I don't want to like, share testimonies like by the numbers, but, but the Lord has blessed me in, in ways where it's even beyond my comprehension, and I know God is in it. You know, we, we own properties. Now, even owning the properties in itself is a miracle, but we own them. And then our properties, the kind of, you know, see, 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 you know, and I'm not trying to brag, I'm just trying to encourage you. The kind of people that rent these properties, only God has brought them. You know, big corporations that, to be quite frank, I don't know who they are. I mean, Africa, um, Africa Finance Corporation has been our tenant. Uh, it is a lot or somebody, you know, Airtel right now, just, we're about to sign with them. I don't know them. Uh, the UN is my tenant. I don't know them. British government is my tenant. I don't know them. The High Commission of India is my tenant. I don't know them. I didn't look for them. But they are my tenants and they pay well. To that point. But, but I know that my focus has always been helping the poor. You know, God has put it in my heart and I've listened. And I'll tell you this. God needs the poor helped. He needs things to reach the poor. If you make yourself a conduit for the poor to get blessed, that should not be your motive. Your motive should be love. But a byproduct of what you do is that you shall be blessed seriously. Now, let me tell you, a pipe that supplies water is never dry. Your life will not be dry in Jesus' name. Do you just get that? A pipe that is pumping water into a field, it is never dry. So, never be afraid to be a pipe. To be a pipe. Because, because, because you see people, their fortunes will go up, it will go down. One day they'll be really rich, then they are poor. But if you are a consistent pipe pushing water to where God needs the water to be, you can never be dry. Your life will never be dry. You know, and truly, I need you to know this. I need to know this. This is not something that we're going to do often, to be quite frank, because I'm not comfortable doing it. In fact, I've been told not to do it. But you see, when you hear from God, you cannot listen to anybody else. Once you've heard from God, you've got to do what God tells you. And I'll tell you this, you must be bold. You must be bold. As children of God, when God tells you something, do not look at your power. Do not look at your abilities. Just know that God who sent you shall back you up. Eyes closed, heads back. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for your word. 
Bye. Bye.